Welcome to Joanna's DIY Life. I am so glad you are here. This is a Sew It Saturday series. And in this series, sometimes we sew, sometimes I teach you things about sewing or about, you know, your machine or learning process. You know, some are beginners and, you know, I want you to learn how to sew if you don't know um, how or, you know, things like that. So. This is gonna be one of those learning processes that we all should know, okay? Um, now, if you have a sewing machine, I um, have videos linked in my description under the Sewing Saturday that you can go back and watch. But this one is to show you how to clean your machine. I've showed you how to use your machine, so that should be good. Now I'm gonna teach you how to clean it. That is very important that you take care of your machine or it's not gonna last you a long time. And also you need to know what to clean it with because not everything is as it seems and I'll explain that as I go along. So let's go down here and I'm gonna show you on two machines how to clean around the bobbin area and I'm gonna show you one how to oil it um, but this one here, it does not need oiled. I, um, I take it to get oiled. I don't do that. So, um, let's go down here and I'll show you what we're going to do. Okay. So if you have a machine with a drop in bobbin, which is, you know, down here. Okay. I'm going to show you how to clean around this mechanism. First you need to take your foot off and then you need to pull your needle out. Um, you can run your hands down your needle like this to see if you feel a burr. If you do, you definitely need to change your needle just so you know that. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a screwdriver and I have these little chubbies in my Amazon store. Um, there's a link. You just click the link and it'll take you to my store. Once you get them loose, you can take your fingers most of the time because this is just annoying and it's a, it's a short space to be down in here. So you just take your finger and you roll it around and you'll be able to pull your screw up and just take it out with your finger. Now set it to the side where you will not lose it because you, you have to have these. And then, you know, nothing wants to work when you're on camera, I promise. There it goes. You just run your finger around, normally they'll come out. This is called your needle plate. When you take your needle plate off, you can wipe this down with a cloth, but you will see right here, there is lint right here. When these feed dogs get lint in them, you know, it, it'll, it'll be hard to get your fabric through there. So one good thing is, you know, you always have a brush, but when I use a brush, it usually just pushes my lint back in there. You'll get lint back here these work great to grab that lint. These are um, brushes that go in straws. Now, if you don't have a brush that goes in straws, a nice little hack that you can do is take a normal pipe cleaner. They're not very strong. I like to fold mine in half and give them a little twist. Now I leave a little hook on the, or a little thing on the end, and I just twist it down, you know, to make it more uh, stable. Now you can take this and go right down in here and stuff, look how dirty that is in this machine. Y'all, I was supposed to give this machine to my daughter, but circumstances happened and she moved, and so I've still got it. It's still hers. And, you know, I should have cleaned it before I gave it to her, but I didn't, so I am now. So, you know, this is just what I say, yucky. Now you pull your little tabs back, take your bobbin case out, you'll have this piece, you'll have your bobbin, 
and then you'll have this piece. We need to get down in here and clean this piece. So again, I'm just going to take my pipe cleaner and you just go around and give it a good swiping, okay? A good swiping. You can go over your feed dogs under here and I don't know if you can see but lint is just falling because when you sew you get a lot of lint um, it just happens fabric is very linty uh, that's why we get it out of our dryers I'm just gonna go around in there just rubbing back and forth and pulling pulling strings that may have got caught in your bobbin or you know what have you just pulling it all out. Now your hands will get dirty. You can wear gloves if you choose to. I'm just not that kind of, I'm just not that kind of person. Uh, I can't. Now this, you'll want to take this and rub with a cloth or you can just use your same pipe cleaner. Just rub around under here. You ain't going to hurt nothing. Okay and rub all that dirt off and inside this bobbin case it gets dusty down in here so you just take and wipe that off now look how dirty this thing has gotten that's how dirty the machine was so now you got all this mess down here you can suck that up with a vacuum don't judge me about how dirty this is I actually use it I have a duster and I'm just going to run it down and get all this, oh, oops, sorry, away from my machine. Now, before I put this back together, okay, I'm going to show you the oiling process. These parts need to move, and they need to move freely. So you're going to need sewing machine oil. You do not need any oil that's not specifically made for a sewing machine machine the reason being some people use gun oil or other oils you you should not do that these have plastic parts gun oil was made for metal not plastic these have plastic gears and plastic parts in them now so you don't need that you need a sewing machine oil um, they do sell these at Walmart they sell them on Amazon the only thing they have a spout this spout is so big, when you go to put oil in, it pours everywhere. It does not, um, it's not very precision uh, as far as where the oil goes. So what I like to do, I bought that because I didn't have any, I couldn't find anything else. I like Singer sewing machine oil preferably, and I have that in my Amazon store. But I love these they get down in your gears where you need them to go. You have to pull this all the way up and you will have to squeeze and it lets out just the smallest. The sm Now you have to squeeze hard, I will tell you. It lets out the smallest little bead of oil. Do you see that? Smallest little bead. That's all you need. So what you want to do is you want to go right down in here. Okay, in here is where these things go. You want to take and put a drop of oil right where them to twist and turn together. That's all you need to do. One drop of oil right there. You take this, you put this in here. This goes first. Then you take this prongs go in your manual should tell you this once it's in you pull your things back snaps and you're done you can now put your bobbin back inside your machine until it snaps just like that right there your bobbin is in there. Now, you just take and make sure your plate is clean. Put it back on. 
the right way, insert your screws, and screw that back down. Even if you take your machine to be serviced, which you only, unless something happens, you only need to take your machine once a year or, you know, some people like once a year. If I have a machine like this, I don't take it unless it breaks. Now, my embroidery baby lock machine, I do need to take it to get serviced once a year just to make sure everything's on check. Make sure you tighten your screws down real good. And that part's done. Now I'm going to show you how to oil the inside. Okay, hopefully you could see this. Right here, mine has a plug. So I'm just going to take my pink tool. You can use whatever. You can poke down in there. Pull your plug out. Okay, now you have a screw in there. You need to unscrew your screw. And I have to pause you because I can't see. I had to get a longer screwdriver for one thing. But I unscrewed my screw. Don't lose it. And this piece should pop off. And your instruction manual should show you this. Okay. Um, you cannot see in here. Hold on. Let me try to set up a light. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully that helps. But what you want to do is you want to turn your crank to you. Any part that moves, you just add a drop of oil. Some machines don't need oil, like my baby lock over here. And your, your um, manual will tell you whether it needs oiled or it does not need oiled. But any part that you see that moves, you just drop a drop of oil on there. Okay? And there's several parts. You just have to look and see where your machine is moving. Now, the reason you don't want a lot of oil is because when it goes down the shaft, it will get your fabric nasty. Um, it will get it dirty and oily, and it does not come out. So you're just dropping oil all over all these parts. Then you should have it plugged in. When you get that done, now I am not taking this whole machine apart and doing the inside. That's to me, not necessary, but you'll just take and put your foot on the pedal and let it sew just a little bit to get all these parts oiled and moving real good, okay? Then when you get that done, you just pop everything back in place. Then when you get that screwed back on, you'll know it's in the right place if your screw holes line up. You just pop your pop, I mean, pop your cap back in there and then you're done. You can put your needle back in and your foot back on. Now I'll show you on the other one, which is a drop-in bobbin. Now on this one, this is the way my daughter's machine is. And a lot of your drop-in bobbin machines have this plastic piece now. So what you want to do is you want to remove your piece here and get it out of your way. Then you're going to follow your instructions of how to get everything apart. First thing you want to do is take your bobbin out and put it where it won't get lost. Mine pulls back and then pops out and then all this is exposed. Now I have to be careful because I have a thread cutter in here and I do not want to damage my thread cutter. Okay, now this machine came with its own screwdriver. These are fatter screws, so this will work, but it wobbles quite a bit. I love this. When you put this in, you just take your, your foot off. This one does not need clean because it just got back from being serviced. But anyways, this is how you clean this one. You take everything apart. You pull all this out, I'll show you, just because you might not have been down in here. And my daughter just informed me today that because I know things, I do not explain things correctly. 
and I want to explain things correctly. Now, I'm not going to plug this machine in. I hope that you can see because if I plug it in and it doesn't have this on it, it's just going to sit there and beep. And y'all don't want to hear it and neither do I. So, I am taking my screws out. Make sure you don't lose them in your machine, y'all. Seriously. Okay. I'm not going to take my needle out. This right here will pop right out. This is your bobbin case in these drop-in bobbins. This is what your bobbin case looks like. So you just take your whatever, your brush, pipe cleaner, whatever you have, roll it around in there. I like to go down in my machine behind all my parts and pick out lint. Um, it gets nasty even down, you know, in your machine. Um, so I just like to get in there and dig that out. Now, all you do to put your bobbin case back in is take your bobbin case. There is a white arrow. It lines up here. There's usually a, a thing to show you where your case goes in. It goes in just like that and it moves. Now, all you have to do is just put your machine back together. Screw your screws down and I won't uh, make you watch me do that. Now you want to just take your plastic piece and most of these pop in. You set it down, push it up until it pops. Then drop your bobbin in, pull it around. However yours, my black one goes straight up. This one goes around and over. Put your foot back on, whatever foot you're using. And that's how you maintain a sewing machine. Well, I hope I was able to help you in some way. Um, it is very important that you do at least clean the bobbin cases of your machine periodically, um, especially if you're sewing like really fuzzy fabrics or fleece. Flannel is a big, you know, distributor of lint and dust particles. So you want to keep that cleaned out so that it can turn and and it'll keep you from having skip stitches, um, you know, things of that nature. Your sewing will go so much smoother if you clean your machines out. So if this was beneficial to you, please give this video a thumbs up. And I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and become part of my YouTube family. All of your comments, your likes, and all that helps my channel to grow and helps YouTube notice me a little bit more. And I do appreciate you supporting me that way it helps me out more than you more than you realize so with all that being said i am going to leave you now so i want you to remember that you are a blessing goodbye